In order to sketch three-dimensional surfaces, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to look at the intercepts. Where does that surface intersect the coordinate axes? So we're going to determine the points, if any, where the surface intersects. To find these intercepts on the coordinate axes, we're going to set x, y, and z equal to zero in pairs in the equation of our surface. And then once we set the other two coordinate variables equal to zero, we will solve for the third variable to find that variable's intercept. We're going to make use of traces. If we could make good traces of a surface, that'll help us figure out what that surface is. And once we do the intercepts, once we do the traces, we're going to complete the figure. We're, we're going to sketch at least two traces in parallel planes. For example, the z equals 0 and the z equals 1 or minus 1 traces would be good traces to start with. Then we're going to draw smooth curves that pass through the traces to fill out the surface. So there's a few things, a couple of things you want to look for when you're sketching. You want to ask yourself these questions each time you sketch. First question is, what would the surface look like if I set one of the variables equal to zero? Would we get a graph of an equation that we can recognize if it were in two dimensions? And what would the surface look like if I set one of the variables equal to some non-zero constant? Would this be a graph of an equation that we would recognize in two dimensions? So this is the, the power of traces, is how by, by sketching the trace of something and projecting that trace into two dimensions, it, can, it will enable us to figure out what curves or what surfaces look like. Let's use traces to sketch the surface described by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25. Let's write that down. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25. Well, the first thing I want to do is let's just go ahead and find the intercepts of this surface. Before I do that, I am going to create an XYZ coordinate system. And let's do a convenient set of tick marks to indicate our scale. And I'm going to make the y-axis a little bit bigger. And let's do some scaling in the x direction, in the negative x direction, in the z direction, and in the negative z direction. Now that we've drawn our coordinate system, let's figure out where this surface intersects our coordinate axes. Let's begin by finding the x-intercept. The x-intercept occurs when x, when y and z are equal to zero. So when y and z are equal to zero, from this equation, we would get x squared equals 25, or x equals plus or minus five. 
This gives our x-intercepts being on the positive x-axis at x equals 5 and the negative x-axis at x equals minus 5. The y-intercept is found by setting the other two axes, um, the other two variables equal to zero. So x and z would be equal to zero if we want to find the y-intercept. Here, this gives us y squared equals 25, or y equals plus or minus 5. The z-intercept is found by setting x and y equal to 0. Here, z squared equals 25, or z equals plus or minus 5. Now that we have found the intercepts, let's find some traces to help us figure out what this shape is supposed to be. Let's go ahead and copy this graph to the next page. Again, the equation is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25. Let's start by finding an xy trace. To find the xy trace, let's take a, pl a plane that is parallel to the xy axis, or to the xy plane. So a plane that's parallel to the xy plane would be a plane with some value of z. So we would say z equals some value. How about z naught? And for us, let's go ahead and say z naught is equal to zero. This will produce our first trace. This is a plane that is actually in the coordinate plane at the value z equals zero. So if we take that, that z equals zero, and plug it into our equation. Notice we get an equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. Do you know what that is an equation of? That's an equation of a circle in the xy plane. So setting z to some value, and in this case the value is zero, we were able to get an equation in one of the coordinate planes, in this case the xy plane, and this equation is a circle of radius five. Let's go ahead and sketch that circle of radius five in the xy plane. That circle, it looks something like this. All right, so we know we at least have a circle. Well, where do we go from here? Well, let's try a different trace, a trace in a different coordinate plane. This time, let's go ahead and do a trace in the xz plane. So if we do a trace in the xz coordinate plane, that would correspond to a value of y equals 0. So I'll just say y not equals 0. If we set y equals to 0, our equation becomes x squared plus z squared equals 25. Again, we have an equation of a, of a circle of radius 5, it just so happens, though, that this circle is in the xz plane. Let's sketch that circle that's in the xz plane. That circle looks something like this. 
All right. And again, that circle, if is we're calling it a trace. So really, that circle was produced by this plane that we took parallel to the XZ plane. Let's go ahead and, and um, label these traces for now. So I will just call this one y not equals 0, and this one was z not equals 0. Okay, well, well, that's pretty cool so far, but let's do one more trace. Let's do a tr the trace of the third coordinate plane that we haven't done yet. So this would be the zy trace. So with the yz trace, we are going to take a plane that is parallel to the yz plane, and that plane, let's go ahead and take the plane x equals 0. Which means if we substitute x equals 0 into our equation, we would end up with y squared plus z squared equals 25. Once again, this is an equation of a circle, but it's a circle in the yz plane. So let's sketch that. This circle right here. Now, unfortunately, my circles are looking really bad. Let me redraw that. And because my scaling wasn't an equal scaling on each coordinate plane, this looks more like an ellipse than it does a sphere. But looking at all of this, I bet that this surface represents a sphere. It's a sphere of radius 5. And the traces help me to do that because I see that in each coordinate plane, we have a trace that's circular. If we were looking down, for example, from the z-axis down to the origin, we would see a circle of radius 5. But then if we looked down from the y, positive y-axis to the origin, we'd have the same circle of radius 5. Well, actually, a different circle, but it'll be a circle of radius 5. If we look then down from the positive x-axis, we would get another circle of radius 5. All of those cir circles suggest strongly that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is an equation of a sphere in three-dimensional space.